Here's the first uh, conversation for Chapter 2 in Conceptual Physics for Leaves of Learning School. And uh, what we will talk about today is Aristotle. We'll talk about Galileo and inertia. And we will talk about Newton's first law of motion. That's all the further that this particular video will go. The rest of the chapter includes additional topics, and they will be on a future video. So let's start out with Aristotle. Remember that he is a Greek philosopher. He uh, was not a scientist so much as he was a philosopher, a person who, who um, uh, tried to think about and debate the world around them, but not into experimentation. Um, Aristotle, based on his uh, brilliant mind and uh, conversations, had the expectation of the world around him. And he divided it into two categories. Um, he called it natural motion and violent motion. Uh, and the natural motion was kind of the idea that an object in our world has a place that it wants to be, uh, a position that it wants to be in. Um, and an object not in its proper place will have motion to get there. Think about, uh, think about um, smoke blowing or um, a ball rolling down a hill. Uh, so Aristotle has the idea of natural motion. Generally, things, go, things on Earth go straight up and down. Um, they already knew that uh, things that they could see in the heavens was circular, that orbits were, were circular, and uh, had the expectation that uh, the sun, and they were of the opinion that the sun and the moon circled the earth. Um, he contrasted that with violent motion, so things that were not natural, things that were a response to an external push or pull, for example, wind on a sailing vessel. These are logical ideas, but not uh, what we consider to be true today. Um, Galileo came along uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago after Aristotle, and he had a different con concept of uh, how Now, Galileo's famous experiment in the uh, 1500s was about how things move. And, and he, uh, he demonstrated that objects of different weights will fall to the ground at the same time. Um, and, that, uh, and he made the observation that something that is moving will continue to move unless um, there's an action on it to make it stop. Galileo gives us two terms that um, even though we talked about our vocabulary in science maybe being different than common vocabulary, these are pretty close to what, uh, what you might hear in an ordinary conversation. So we will talk about a force being a push or a pull, something um, acting on something else to, uh, to um, result in a change of some sort. Um, contrast that with the idea of inertia. And inertia is an interesting word that, uh, again, you might find in uh, common language um, being that something does not want to change. Um, and it's a property of matter that um, we want to, re that, uh, that an object wants to resist changes in motion. And, and this corresponds directly with the massiveness of an object. Um, think about, uh, think about, um, a very large rock and a very small rock on a smooth sheet of ice. So you're on a hockey rink, you've got a massive object and a small object. Um, they can both move, but uh, the smaller object is going to have less, uh, the, the less massive act of object is going to be less reluctant to move. So your push or your pull to move it um, will be less because it's less massive. One of the things that Galileo observed and inferred is that when he had a ball on an inclined plane, that if it were going down the hill, down the ramp, um, the speed would steadily increase. And if it were going up the ramp, 
the speed would steadily decrease. So he infers that on a flat surface, a, a plane with no incline, is the uh, is it is it uh, is the ball going to? Um, it's not going to speed up because it's not going downhill, and it's not going to slow down because it's not going uphill. So by conclusion, that speed does not change. And uh, without a force to stop it, it would maintain its speed indefinitely. Uh, contrasting Galileo with Aristotle, with the, when the ball does eventually come to rest, um, it's not because it has a natural inclination to stop moving. Remember, Aristotle thought that things had a natural place that they wanted to be. But in fact, uh, we, uh, uh, Galileo, uh, presume that it would be friction that would eventually make the ball stop. We will talk a whole lot more about friction in a later chapter. So let's talk about, let's do a little quiz around Galileo and inertia. Those inclined planes that Galileo was uh, using the ball with, does, did it help him identify um, acceleration of free fall? Did it help him lock into the concept of energy? Did it help him develop his ideas around the property of inertia, or did it uh, work with the concept of momentum? Think about that for a minute. So what did Galileo conclude from the inclined planes? Well, he, he concludes the property that we call inertia. Now, inertia does not explain the behavior of the matter. It is simply the behavior of the matter, of the matter. and we will work with that a good deal more. So um, Newton, Isaac Newton, was actually born pretty quickly after Galileo's death. Their work did not overlap, but uh, Newton was an interesting figure in history. Uh, you've got another video, an optional video that is his biography. Um, interesting man to learn about. Um, but Newton took Galileo's concepts and restated it into what's now known as Newton's first law. Uh, this is not unique to Newton, this is really more of Galileo's work, but Newton's first law says that uh, commonly people will say an object in motion continues in motion, an object at rest stays at rest. So if there are no outside forces, um, inertia wins, and whatever the object is doing, it keeps on doing. Uh, it becomes really critically important when, uh, when you take it to the study of astronomy, which is outside of what we'll do in this class, but the, uh, the motions of the planets, comets, stars, um, is uh, contingent on this idea that an object in motion continues in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest. Important to remember, Newton's first law. Um, this is the end of our conversation for right now. You've got some optional videos. These are demonstrations that uh, are not very long and kind of interesting, and they are demonstrating inertia um, with a little bit of a conversation around it. Uh, we can choose to replicate some of these dem demonstrations in class, uh, um, but go ahead and start with looking at the video right now. There's another video that I'm giving to you, which is both a written um, conversation about Isaac Newton and uh, um, a couple short videos in there that talk about his life and the impact that he had. Alrighty, this is it for our conversation now and uh, see you soon.